What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of romance. And today, Sean, I'm I'm sitting I'm sitting in a room, and I'm 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 like I have I have this like Gonzo setup going on right now. I'm looking at you through my phone. I have a microphone in my hand. You're in a closet. Recording, I'm in so the, basically a closet. Yeah, this is kind of like old school LOB. Like I, this is back when you were traveling the world. Oh my god, having I remember to find that. a place to like hunker down and record an episode. Or when we were, when we first. I, okay, here you go. Here you go. A little background. When we first started recording, ver, like at the very very beginning, I don't think we even did it visually. Because my internet connection was so shit. You're right. We were yeah. actually, we talked, we just talked on the phone. Yeah, I don't think it was, I forgot all about that. It wasn't until we did an episode with uh, Podcast Junkies where he asked us to do it visually. We're like, yeah. Well, yeah, let's see if we can do that. And then like, yeah. it was like, well, maybe we should keep doing this. Maybe we should yeah. look at each other. <laughs> so yeah, so That's the first point. the first few episodes, we actually did it just over the phone where we... Like we recorded our audio, but we talked to each other over the phone, didn't actually look at each other in the face. But I remember like I was sitting at my mother in law's kitchen table. <laughs> and that's how that's how like the first like maybe not the very first one, but at least like three at least like three or four of the first five. I recorded at my mother in law's kitchen table with the phone and some earbuds. And a little, and my little microphone on a little stand. Oh man! And look how far we've come. Now, now you're sitting in a closet yep. with a microphone in your hand and your earbuds in. We I would say, oh, how circle. the mighty have fallen, but I don't know if we've ever stood up. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be. You, you gotta. You gotta hit the heights before you can fall. Yeah, we haven't really gone through that like Johnny Depp blow, like high and low. We've just always yeah. kind of been low. Pride has not come yet, just the fall. <laughs> yep. So, Richard, that's a great segue because, you know, what is something that Johnny Depp's character in Blow it was able to p- afford was a lot of exotic things, right? Yeah. It was and perfect. I, until it wasn't. And I want to talk to you, Richard, about animals, big animals, in places they shouldn't be. Like the back of a Volkswagen? Like the back of a Volkswagen. (laughs) So, Richard, I want to talk about Pablo Escobar. I knew it. So, this story... Wait a minute. Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar is in Blow. Is that why you were talking about Blow so much? Were you you trying to force the segue? Can't do that, baby. You gotta gotta, gotta let it flow. We'll get there. No No matter what, we get there. Hey. So, hey, well, Italian, we Blow was there. more. I forgot he was in Blow. Well, I mean, not he himself, but. No, the, yeah, the, yeah. They're not the, the actual Pablo Escobar is not in the movie Blow. Because movie at I this point, I think he's dead. Because that movie came out when I didn't really understand that it was based on like a true story. You know so, what I really loved about that movie was the DVD. The DVD oh, really? was the DVD was fantastic, and here's why: because it had this feature, because it was like it a came new line thing, with a code to get cocaine. No, no. But while you're watching the movie, like it was like you know what it was like. It was like pop up video. Do you remember yes. pop up video? Oh, I love pop up. Oh video. my god. Okay, pop, so pop up video. There was this feature called like Infinifilm or something like that, and you turned it on, and as you were watching the movie, things would pop up and be like, "Oh, you know this." There's this little, you know, ten minute documentary on Pablo Escobar. If you want to know more about him, and you're like, "Uh, yes," and then you hit this button, and then it would cut you out, and then you'd watch this little ten minute like bio biopic on on Pablo Escobar and then it would bring you back to the movie right where you left off. And then like little bits of information would pop up about like making of and, and shit like that. And you just basically like, as you watch the movie, you're like, yes, I want to know. I want to teach me about that. Teach me about that. Oh, it's fucking great. I so wish they still did that. Yeah. I know you get a little bit, actually, I, I feel like you're losing that with everything going streaming because you don't have those bonus features as much anymore. 100%. Now you have to pay for them. You have to pay well, like extra for them. Yeah, I think there's some of that out there, but even then, it's not super convenient. Like the DVD, it was like, oh, do you want to watch with or without commentary? You had two button clicks, and you already put the DVD in, so you're like, oh, well, yeah, okay. But now 
you have to probably buy the DVD to get the full features, which nobody's. And I say DVD. I, actually, it's Blu-ray. Yeah. Nobody buys the Blu-ray anymore. Everybody no, buys if, it streaming. Yeah. And even if you do buy the Blu-ray, do you really want to get up, walk over your cabinet, dig through all the Blu-rays you have, open it, put it in, hit play? No, that's too much work. Oh, no, no, no. Or 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 the or the more likely scenario, you uh get up, go to your cabinet, pull out your Blu-ray DVD, put it in the DVD, put it in your Blu-ray player, and then find out that your Blu-ray's been scratched to shit. Yeah. And now it's completely unusable. That's why everybody buys streaming is because they're like, well, the Blu-ray disc will fuck up eventually. Yeah. Even I don't know how that works, too, because like I have Blu-rays that I haven't like it's been in the same cabinet for like 15 years. <laughs> and when I go to pull it out, it's all scratched up. I'm like, listen, is the earth moving just enough to make these things turn? <laughs> Uh, but you have to be careful because even with streaming, like they'll take that stuff away. I've got like tons of music from Apple that I no longer have. Yep. A hundred percent. Um, and you know how much they refunded me? All the, all the dollars. Oh, (laughs) I was close. Um, I, anymore, I collect Blu-rays like records, you know, like you find the records like you, that you really, really, really like. And those are the ones that you get. And those are the ones you keep. You know what I have on Blu-ray, Sean? I have the dark Knight. I have uh, the first Avengers, and I have Big Trouble in Little China. That's what I have on Blu-ray. Yeah, any more? Like I've got all most of the Kevin Smith stuff on Blu-ray or DVD. But yeah, it's basically kind of a collecting thing now. So I'll exactly. real talk right now, Richard. My wife just caught me doing this. So masturbating, masturbating. I knew it. So on a I, Blu-ray. <laughs> And she's so, like, that's my copy of the First Wives Club, you son of a bitch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all scratched I really now. like Goldie Hawn. <laughs> no, so I was going back and trying to figure out, like, throughout my gaming history, what baseball games I had. And I stumbled across the NES game that I had on okay. eBay. And so oh, that led shit. me down the trail of, like, maybe I should own all the baseball games I've ever had in my life just to put up somewhere. <laughs> so I went on an eBay splurge and bought, like, five or six of them for, like, two really? bucks a piece. Yeah. And one of them showed up today. It was a 1997 EA Sports triple play for PC. And I opened it up, and she looked at it. She's like, you don't even have one of those. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's it's just for But uh, I for could, looks. and that's I what's could. important. <laughs> But Richard, collecting is something that, you know, when you got the extra scratch, you can collect like right now, like a couple bucks for these things. I've got the scratch for that, right? Yeah. yeah. Some people with even more scratch, like Pablo Escobar, he can collect really amazing things. Like so Richard, for years, and this comes from abc.net.au. So for years, Pablo Escobar and the cartel were larger than life criminals who amassed a fortune in Colombia. The cartel of Escobar, Jorge, Ochoa, and Carlos were drug traffickers. Like, I don't need to go into too much about that, right? Like, everybody knows that. Pablo Escobar is a drug trafficker. Yeah. New, news to the world. Money. You heard it so, here first, folks. No, you did. You did not hear that here first. <laughs> how was, do you know how Escobar was killed? Was it just like prison or was it a. I have no idea. I. Okay. You so know what? Escobar- if you want, I can find my Blow DVD and I can put it on, and we can we could pause this for a second. I could put Blow on my on 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 my DVD and then we I could find out real quick. All right, we'll do that a few moments later. Shine ah. the DVD's fucking broken. <laughs> I knew so- it. I should have bought it on Amazon. <laughs> so Escobar was killed in '93, but his life and his luxury. Naples Ranch left a negative legacy for the Columbia environment. Oh, no. So, Richard, at the height of his power in the 1980s, the drug lord bought four hippos for his private zoo. Fuck that, dude. Hippos Hippos. are terrifying. The most dangerous animals known to man. I think, dude, I'm not kidding. I've heard I've heard that they're like the most like aggressive animal on Earth. Yeah, that they're fucking mean. They they like they bite they bite boats you're floating around you know how i knew this i watched the movie congo no i don't mm. own it on on dvd but if i did it probably wouldn't work but i if i remember watching the movie and they're sailing around they're sailing down the river 
in in a in a raft. They all have these little rubber rafts, and all of a sudden, you know, they're attacked by hippos. And you mm-hmm. know what the hippos do? They just come up and just ah chomp and just I take bites out of the boat. I think they attack from the bottom because their mouths open at like a hundred and eighty degree angle, and they just chomp. Jesus, fuck all that, dude. Yeah. You know how badass hippos are? Like a baby hippo can swim through a bunch of crocodiles. And the crocodile's like, I ain't fucking with that. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nope. Not me. Nope. Yeah. Not eating that. I refuse. Oof. Yeah. And then They're the little baby just... crocodile's like, look at that big thing. That looks tasty. I'm going to eat it. And then mama crocodile's like, no, 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 no. No, we do not do that here. But so Richard, so you think he's got four hippos now in his private zoo. He had giraffes and elephants as well. And Columbia, I, I'm not sure compared to uh, what are the, hippos aren't in the Nile, are they? Or in the are they in the Nile? I have no idea. I don't either. I thought they were but, just like in the in the jungle. They were I think, like I, no, I think they're in rivers. At least that's what the St. Louis Zoo tells me because they're it's like the hippo river, whatever. Animation tells me they're in Madagascar. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they like to move of, it, move it. They like to move it, move it. So is the Columbia environment and climate, is it similar to their... It's got to be similar to their homeland. Well, they got the Amazon, hippos. kind yeah. of. Yeah. Well, so, the, yeah. The, the the rainforest, the rainforest, kind of. So it's similar enough that they could survive. So they had giraffes, they had elephants, and after his death, while other animals were taken away, the hippos were deemed too difficult and remained at the property. Oh, surprise, so fucking surprise. Yeah, the so hippos were pissy. Yeah, so the Columbia government, I'm assuming, comes in and is like, listen, we got to take these elephants. We got to sell them to a zoo in America. Yeah. These giraffes. Just, you know. Look, here's what's going to happen. Big- we're going to build a big boat and we're going to put all Pablo's animals on the boat. And then we're going to sail it to a new world. We're, the way we got two giraffes. Okay. Two, two hippos. Elephants. Yeah, two elephants. No, then they're like, let's get two hippos. And they lose like 12 men. Like, ah, let's just not worry about it. Those yeah. hippos are mean. Fuck that. Fuck them hippos. They probably fucked with one of the kids. The crocodile's like, their mom should have been around to warn them. Yeah. <laughs> There's another kid fucking <laughs> with that hippo. <laughs> so, Richard, you know, whenever you have animals out in nature on their own, nature finds a way. That's. Uh, that's very true. And as, so now, as taught to us by the by the Messiah Jeff Goldblum. Mm-hmm. So now, Richard, what you have? You had four hippos. That's not too bad. Like you can manage four hippos. They're gonna grow old. They're gonna die. Yeah. But Richard, hippos like to have sex and repopulate. Oh man, I didn't realize how much hippos like. How much do hippos like to fuck? Oh my god! Uh, There's gonna enough, be like fifty-five hippos, aren't there? No, there is an estimated. They don't even know for sure, but they estimate that there is eighty hippopotamuses holy in shit this area so so like so pablo's so that means does that make pablo like the hippo god and then these or the hippo hippos king. no he's the hippo god and then the and then the hippos that he brought to his to his ranch are like hippo adam and hippo eve oh yeah they kind of are except he and, like picked four of them but he's like yeah, yeah you know better odds yeah, and then Pablo's yeah. So it's Hippo Adam, Hippo Eve, then Hippo Steve, and Hippo Evie. Hippo, mm, that's a tough one. Eve, wait, no, Adam, hippo, Eve, Steve, and, and so Doris. Have, what's, a, what's a what's a female Adam? I don't know, Madam. Yeah, Madam, Adam, Eve, <laughs> Steve, Madam and what? Madam. Just Madam, that's her name. Madam Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so the rapid growth of their numbers has authorities worried residents could be attacked. So these three-ton animals can be aggressive and kill more people in Africa than any other wildlife species. Right. Yeah, exactly. And he, bear in mind, people, we're talking about the continent that holds lions, cheetahs, uh, elephants, cheetahs, elephants, hyenas. Crocodiles. Hyenas, uh, wildebeest, the, the the bad guys from Lion King. No, I already said hyenas. Yeah, you had hyenas. Uh, all kinds of crazy poisonous snakes. Scar. Yeah. Jeremy Irons slips in. <laughs> <laughs> but hippos kill more people than Jeremy Irons, and you and know what thing- that is? That's facts. 
And the thing with hippos too, like they're not killing you because they want to eat you. They're just killing you because. Yeah, because that because fuck your face. That's why. Which I don't know what's worse. Like if I'm gonna get killed by an animal, I would hope that it's gonna eat me, right? Like I don't want to get trampled or like. Do you want to be killed? I was gonna say, do you want to be killed and then eaten, or do you want to be eaten and then killed? No, Rich. I'd love to sit there while something's munching on my guts and I'm still alive. Of course, I want to die first. Well, okay, wait, wait, wait. What does okay. this look like? A marriage? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Ooh, not go, not that, dip, not dipping my toe in that water. That chomps like a hippo, Sean. No, but like your insides don't have nerve endings. I still think it would hurt like hell. Well, you probably go in shock at some point. Yeah, like, like, let's say, like, you know, a hyena, or let's say Scar. Let's say Jeremy Irons comes up and cuts your belly open, and your insides fall out. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then Jeremy Irons starts eating your your insides. Like, you don't feel that. Like, yeah, you I see bet- it happening, and that fucks with your head. 100%. Yeah, you still have phantom pains. Yeah, like, that's going to fuck with your head 100%, but, like, you're not actually feeling it. Yeah, I wonder when that happens, if, like, you feel like you just took the biggest dump ever. Like probably, you're like, oh, oh man, my god, so light. I'm like 20 pounds lighter. <laughs> hey guys, I'm feeling lightheaded. What's going on? Thunk. Yeah, but like, these things. Because fucking, uh, because uh, uh, in Braveheart, like they take they take Mel Gibson's uh intestines out, and then they put them in a. Uh, they didn't do this in the movie. They did this historically, but they took his intestines out, and then they put them in a bowl next to him and lit the bowl on fire didn't they cut his pp off in real life probably poor mel gibson bet you thought you never hear anybody out of that phrase anymore huh yeah well i mean <laughs> back then they did now they're like yeah he deserved it like, <laughs> do you understand acting they didn't actually do that he doesn't really know jesus everybody uh i beg to differ i've seen a picture with him he's <laughs> sitting in a chair and jesus is sitting in the chair and they're talking about Hey, maybe you shouldn't let these Romans do this. <laughs> you know what, sweet tits? God damn it, Chanel. <laughs> We've talked about this. <laughs> Next, you're gonna be in a, you're gonna be starring as a homicidal Santa Claus. <laughs> I would never fall that far. A few years later. <laughs> <laughs> So since Escobar's death, so really, okay, so yeah, so since Escobar's death, the animals have thrived in the area's largest lakes and waterways and grass pastures, but they have brought a tourist boom. Really? Yeah. Why would anyone want to go see hippos? Yeah, I mean, seeing hippos, like when you go to the zoo and they got like the underwater like viewing area and you can see the hippos swimming and eating pumpkins, like it's pretty cool. You know what I don't want to do? Riding a boat across that water. Exactly. I like do you want to stand on the side of a lake that's full of hippos? No, no, you no. don't. I want to be on a platform high away from it in a safe yeah. distance. You want to be like, hey, where's the you know 12 inches of plexiglass between me and this fucking monster that wants to chew my head off yeah. for no other I mean, reason? Like you watch some videos of people in like Florida, the Nile has this. Like I just saw a video of this boat cruising. I'm pretty sure it was like a lake or something in Florida. And all of a sudden, you start seeing something kind of like in the water, like slowly rising, but keeping up with the boat. It's like a 12 foot alligator. Yeah. Like just riding alongside the boat. Yeah. Fuck You know what that. that is for me, Richard? Yeah. Big note. Like people swim in those waters, Richard. Yeah. Like I, like I think that, like I live next to a big giant river and I'm a bit hesitant. I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swim in it. Mm-mm. We go to the, lake and all I have and- to worry about are big giant catfish. Yeah. Well, here, like, we go to the lake and swim, and I get nervous there. Like, I'm waiting for something to come up underneath me and grab me, like a big hippo, a hungry, hungry hippo. Oh, my balls! <laughs> so Pablo Escobar is the reason the hippos... Okay, would you rather... Here we go. This is a would you rather. Would you rather be in an enclosure with hippos or an enclosure with wolves. Mm. I'm going with the wolves because I hear that statistically wolves don't kill people. Yeah. And I've seen that movie with that dude from taken and he fought. Oh yeah. Yeah. So all I have to do is find some 
glass single shot bottles of alcohol and put them between my hands and I could go one on one with the wolf. That's a good point. I saw a movie with Kevin Costner where they danced. Mm, yeah. So, I mean, I haven't I've never seen a movie called Dancing with Hippos. That's my That's point. That's true. Although I have seen a dancing hippo in Fantasia. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Damn. Fucking and that Disney. was made by a bunch of people high on cocaine. It's all coming together. Oh, my God. It's full circle. So, Richard, a new study by researchers of the University of California, San Diego. San As you know, Diego. San Diego stands for the hippo's patoot. <laughs> <laughs> found, they found that the hippos are actually changing the quality of water, which makes sense because it's kind of like, think about like if you had like for lake, worse. Yeah, worse because. So hippos feed at night and then spend the day cooling off in the water where they defecate, changing the chemistry of the lake. So I don't know if you've ever seen cows, and this is a great tale I have. So my grandparents had like five, ten cows maybe. Okay. And we'd we'd walk down to the pond and we'd fish on hot days and whatnot. And you'd see the cows in there. We'd catch a fish, take it off the hook, throw it back. And one day I was sitting there and I'm like, grandma like you know we're fishing we're catching these fish why don't we keep some and and like cook them tonight and right after i finished my sentence a cow maybe 15 yards away just starts shitting in the lake or shitting in the pond (laughs) (laughs) it's like poop 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 grandma's like that's why (laughs) like "Eh, good point eh, makes sense yep yep you can clean a fish but you can't like clean a fish you know what i mean yeah i'm basically saying sean it's eating that cow shit yeah, and you want, and that's the fish you want to eat. You want to eat the, you want to eat the thing that eats shit. You know, your grandfather's right. You're not very bright, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I argue. Hey, and argue. I'm getting there. No, <laughs> not really not. Sean, I'm thirsty, Grandma. Nope, nope, nope. Are you <laughs> drinking the water? Yeah, it's got an earthy taste to it. <laughs> so about this fish, <laughs> don't put it in your mouth. <laughs> so oh, the uh, fish can swim in there. <laughs> Ooh, I don't feel good. My tummy hurts. Maybe I should drink more water. <laughs> so they're talking about this uh the 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 hippos in the water, Richard, and they say that uh they can they can have various negative consequences from the outbreak of harmful algae blooms to things like red tide bacteria. If their population keeps growing the way it is, the potential impact could much could be much more severe. Oh so my they god, are, is this going to be like the Africanized bees? You know, maybe. Are we going to get killer hippos that are going to slowly creep their way from South America like up through Central America and then and then when I'm and then like my kids are going to see like a documentary and be like, and now they've reached the U.S. <laughs> and there's going to be that like little red bubble that's going to have like a picture of a hippo like ah, with its teeth out and shit. They're going to be interviewing Betty White and she's going to be like, I'm rooting for the hippo. <laughs> <laughs> Betty uh, White, 400 years old. <laughs> <laughs> she's the hippo goddess. Yeah, she's the hippo queen. But I I mean, they, they're showing like a picture here shows kind of like a it looks more like a patio, but it's elevated a little bit. And somebody's hand feeding one of these hippos. Why so are tor- you doing that? Well, this looks like it's one of those almost like zoo esque style ones. But I am not I am very anti feed. Like there's zoos where you can feed giraffes. And that even makes me nervous. Yeah, because I'm waiting for that giraffe to like go giraffe like some like four year old kid is like, (laughs) oh, my gosh, I got to leave for the giraffe. And the giraffe is a little hungry and thinking, you know what? All these fucking little kids come in and they wave the leaf in my face and pull it away. Wait, I wonder what a kid arm tastes like. Chomp pulls it over the fence. No, that's not that. No, that won't be what happened. Like the giraffe will just get pissed and like grab the kid by like the back of their shirt and pull him over the fence and just drop him 40 feet. Yeah. And then the little giraffe is like, why don't we eat the the kids we catch right then? The giraffe's going to poop on it. <laughs> that's, oh, why. that's why. <laughs> now go drink the water that the kids shit in. <laughs> So if their population keeps growing the way it is, the potential impact could be much more severe. So local authorities are screaming to come up with a solution, 
And the environmental agency in the region, uh, it's Kornari, has been tasked with finding a solution for the, to, the solution residents are comfortable with, but deals with the animals in a humane way. It's urgent, said Gina Serena. We already have a report of a family of hippos in the Magdalene River. The Magdalene connects almost all of Colombia, so they can move to any part of. Oh the shit! You know what this is? This is this is uh, um, fuck! It's Batman Begins. That's what it is. It's Batman Begins. Oh yeah. Where there, where there, where it's he's, in the water supply. Yeah, where there, where he's, where fucking um, Scarecrow, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson's driving the train to, and he's trying to get to Wayne Tower. Cause he's gonna he's gonna blow up every, he's gonna blow up all the water supply and he's trying to get to Wayne Tower because Wayne Tower has water lines that go everywhere. I don't have to say I don't have to kill you. I don't have to kill all the hippos. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard, yeah. So this is what's happening. So Batman shows up and he's like, I don't have to kill all the hippos. All I have to do is sterilize all of them. Yeah, that's what they're doing, Richard. So. Last year, that they sounds conducted... like an even more dangerous task than killing yeah. hippos. Well, and they're they're trying to sterilize the females for some reason, which I don't know if that's easier because you know I don't I don't well, want to get what's up. That, what sounds easier to you, Sean? Trying to stick a hippo with a needle or trying to lop a male hippo's dick off? I mean, both are dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, but there's w- one you can do from a distance. Well, I mean, technically, with like a an air rifle, you can do one from a distance. You just gotta hit it twice. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew. So this is a complex procedure that requires luring and trapping a hippo in a corral before using sedatives to put it to sleep. Just cutting through a hippo's dense layers of skin and fat takes three hours. Wow. So, like, to me, this seems kind of silly. If why did, captured- why did, Wait a minute. What kind of a world do we live in? Where we have a god that makes this fucking like killing machine and makes it like so hard to fucking like, you know, render inert. Well, I just feel like it's a situation if you've already caught it, like, why not just take it to a zoo or take it somewhere like take it back to wherever it belonged to begin with? We only have so many zoos, Sean. We can't they can't we can't just have like an all hippo zoo. I don't know. I've seen Tiger King. We just need Hippo King. Yeah. How did that work out for Tiger King? Do you really uh, do you want to do that? Do you want to repeat history? I feel like that'd be more dangerous with hippos too. For the record, I have still not watched a single bit of that. Yeah, yeah, not much. Every everything that I know about it is what you told me. Yeah, that's all you need to know. That's that's kind of how I felt about it. But so like I think about this, so like with these hippos right now, they are running rampant in Colombia, right? But there's only estimation of 80 of them, which is a lot, but not not unmanageable, right? So you're, it's not. So, so your solution is to corral the hippos into like one spot. I feel like if you think there's eighty, you could probably start capturing them and taking them wherever they you think might be better suited for them. If they're hurting this environment too much, but Richard, would you take them? Would you take them all the way back to all the way back to the the Congo? You know, or do you, are you trying to? Are you gonna, are you trying to take them all the way back to the Congo, or are you? gonna try to acclimate them like find a spot to acclimate them here i feel like they're there so what really got me looking at this is like it's an invasive species right so this area like and i guess the question is when does an invasive species kind of lose that title it's just it's just part of the natural ecosystem it's part yeah it's just part of the ecosystem now i see i feel like if we're at 80 i feel like we're at if if we're at the point where we can count them then I think that we're at a point where we could we could theoretically transport them. I'd agree. Yeah. So you can try. I mean, even if you only got like seventy five, and you, you're slowly capturing one or so like a year because the the numbers dwindle down. It's manageable, right? It's eighty. It's not eight hundred. It's not eight thousand. But we've we've never really talked about this too much. And so I have like a couple big fears in life. Sharks is the main one. And if we ever have invasive sharks, like sharks on land, <laughs> gun to the head, I'm ending it, Richard. That's yeah, that's it. That's where you draw the line. Yeah. You like knock on the door and you're like, Sean, they're here. Hey, you know what? Arm. Think about this. Hippos, they can walk on land. Yeah, and they're fast too. Like a lot of people think they're like slow, dumb animals. No, they're freaking fast. 
They're fast and they're mean and they're terrible, terrible animals. Yeah, and they don't really dance very well. I'm not I'm nope. not gonna say that to a hippo to its face. They do but, not like yeah. to move it, move it. No, they don't. They don't like to move it, move it. They mm-hmm. don't like to move it. Move it. But Richard, there's an there's another thing that kind of freaks me out. And I've recently seen some videos and they've actually made this a big thing on like Discovery Channel. Uh, because there's an actual season for capturing these animals. Oh, I've seen that too. And then Bon Jovi's talking about it, and he's like, Won't it? Won't, Won't it? it? Richard, <laughs> how much do you know about the invasive bow constrictors in Florida? Um, I, From what I understand, it's a real fucking problem. Yeah, I didn't realize, so looking through some of the stuff, I didn't realize it started in the mid-90s. Yeah, well, thought, the way I understand it is, like, basically people bought snakes, and then they were like, man, taking care of a snake's hard. And then they're like, okay, go be with the snake family. And then everybody let their snakes go, and then the snakes went out into the into the, into the the swamp, and then they started making lots of snakes. And yeah. then the lots of snakes came back, and everybody's like, where'd all these fucking snakes come from? And yeah. it's like, well, it's because Jimbo down the street decided to let, you know, Charlotte out of its cage, and now and now you have 50,000 Charlottes. Yeah, and he, he thought about bashing her head in, but it bit him and almost killed him, so he's like, fuck that and let it go. You know, yep. like, the the Everglades is kind of like an ideal, like, it's basically very similar to their natural habitat, but you know what they don't have in this natural habitat, Richard? predators predators they are the alphas with no predators so they can easily reproduce yeah grow to ridiculous size and what's just... what is their natural what is their predator in the i actually don't know this like what what kills a boa constrictor um that's a good question in this in this game in this game of rock papers boa constrictor what crushes boa constrictor ooh Jaguars. Oh, oh, okay. See, they didn't, they didn't make a Ricky Ticky Tabby movie about a jaguar. So what we need to do, Richard, is we need to go and raise a couple jaguar cubs and release yeah. them into oh the my god. Plates. We should. You know what? We be, we be the heroes of Florida, Sean. Have you seen? So they're. Uh, so did you ever watch um, Swamp People? On Discovery? No, I'm, I'm 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 sad to say I did not. So it's uh it's basically a show about because it was really big during like the um uh crab show, um, Deadliest Catch. Yeah, um, they had a couple. Sh- oh oh yeah, that's right. That's where I came from. But they had a bunch of shows like that. So what they did is they started following people they called Swamp People, which were these uh, alligator hunters in different parts of the country. Okay. And so they basically showed you the different ways that they try to capture alligators and you know harvest them and whatnot. Legally, so it was like, like it was like the crocodile hunter, but but they shot the creature in the head. Yeah, but in the south. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. Louisiana, Florida. I don't know if they had any in Texas. There's some big freaking alligators in Texas. I did not know that. I didn't either. You like, sent me to Texas, you dick. Why? Well, yeah, I did. Hey, you want to go swimming? <laughs> So what they do is, so they had this whole like uh, boa constrictor season where, essentially, I don't know why, but they don't want you to kill the snake. They want you why? to capture it alive, and then bring it in. And, and they bring get, it like, in. What do they do t- with it? I have no clue. I was, I would assume they kill it because some of these snakes are like fifteen, twenty feet long. You know, and honestly, like, what's it say about a state that's like, go out and find boa constrictors and bring them in, like? Like is that like that doesn't that doesn't sound like a safe activity that you, you should encourage people to do. It's like asking it's like it's like my it's like if my governor all of a sudden was like, "Hey everybody, let's go out and look for bears." Well, they they have they have hunting seasons for them. But yeah, this would be well, it wouldn't say bears cuz these boa constrictors could hurt you, but they Well, I'm saying, yeah, and then he'd be like, "Now remember, don't kill the bear, just, you know, Make the bear go night night, or just put the bear in a big box, and then you can bring the box into your bring the box into your local animal shelter. All you have to do is catch it and give it a big bear hug. <laughs> but the boa constrictors, I mean, it's gonna bite you, and they have sharp teeth. 
But yeah. Like if you go, if you fight a bear, like the odds of you subduing it without any kind of like weaponry are small. Boa constrictor is like, I'm not going to do it, but you could grab it by the head and like tangle it in and get it in a bag and take it in and get your 200 bucks for it. No, because the boa constrictor will like wrap itself around your arm and then, and then squeeze and then your arm falls off, Sean. That's science. That's a science That's, fact. Well, I'm not going to fact check you on that one. I so. watched it. I watched Anaconda. Did you see what he did to John Voight? That was John point. Voight, right? Yeah, he threw him up. He ate yeah. him or she. I think it was a she because they had I babies. Know. Swallowed him like unhinged his jaws. Like, yep. Yep. And it's like, oh, John Voight, you're hurting my tummy. Blah. He was still yep. alive, Richard, because he winked. Yeah, because he, he winked. He, well, he he could have blinked, but one of his eyes was swollen shut or something. I don't remember. Yeah, that's a fucked up movie. Ice Cube is in that movie. He was. So yeah. is Jennifer Lopez. That's right. Yeah. You know Could what? You I don't own of that. The DVD. Mm. You need to get it. We need to no, eBay. I that. don't. That's not, 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 that's up, not adding to my collection. When it shows up in my house, my wife's going to be like, why'd you get this VHS of Anaconda? I'm like, it's, <laughs> I just got to get back to I couldn't find it. the Blu-ray, bitch. <laughs> VHS player's on the way. I think my mom has that on VHS. Actually, that was a good movie because there's a part where spoilers, even though this happened like 30 years ago, there's a part where they blow up this bridge and there's a bunch of snakes everywhere. And this one snake's like on this guy's hand and bites his finger. And right when that happened, my mom was eating like chips or something. And I'm sitting in front of her. I see because ah! <laughs> she bit her finger when it happened and scared the shit out of her. <laughs> uh. Our family's not a big fan of snakes, Richard. I don't know if you got that or not. <laughs> so you are you you're not going to go bow constrictor hunting? No, I'm not. See, now I'm picturing like to get back at you because you laugh because like you laughed at her to get back at you like you're sitting at the tub and you're like having a nice bath and you got your little choo choo boat and you're like doo, 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 doo. and then your mom like bust like kicks the door open and like walks in with a TV with jaws on you're like. <laughs> No, it'd be funny. She walks in with a little baby, great white shark. She's like, "You're gonna need a bigger boat, asshole!" Tosses it in, like, ah! jump out of the tub, and then you hit your head, and you yeah. slip, and you fall, and you break your neck. You know why? Because that injury is very common and happens to thousands year after year. Mm-hmm. It's an epidemic. Yep. That's why you always have a buddy when yep. you shower. Yep. Always have a shower buddy. That's why I only have carpeted bathrooms for safety yeah i do too my uh my first house it wasn't all the way but it was in front of the shower but it was a bathroom i didn't use that much but from the shower to the toilet was tile but in front of the shower it was carpeted and it does it feels icky like i only used that shower a handful of times because it was in the basement but it was one of those things like i like i brought two towels down and like dried my myself off like really well and like yeah, air yeah. dried everything it's so like i don't want like even though it's clean water, like I just don't want any water dripping on this. Yeah. Cause but, it's still going to get all like mildewy and shit. But so, you know, I'm kind of a clean freak, right? Like I shower, like what? You know, when I, when I live by myself, my house was super clean all the time, but my roommate at the time, his dog was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. It's a carpet in front of a shower. So this <laughs> is the perfect place to piss all the time. <laughs> and so one day, like, I don't know why I was down there and I walk in, I step on the carpet, it just goes crunch, crunch, crunch. And so oh, I pull it up and worst. it's just like this gross, like uh, piss stain. Uh, and so I, uh, I had to f- fix the bathroom. So I had to take everything out and it was like cemented tile. So I had to rent a jackhammer, a mini jackhammer to get all that tile up because I wasn't going to be able to match the tile. Right. So I had to jackhammer it all up. And as I'm doing this, like, you have to remind me, like, I don't like doing this stuff to begin with. It was costing me money. You are not a handyman, nor am I. No, and I was not happy about this. And so I'm sitting there, like, stuff's flying all over. It's, like, hitting the walls, hitting my arm, cutting my arm. He walks in, eating a thing of ice cream. Didn't bring me any ice cream. He's like, hmm. It looks like that really sucks. Walks back out, eating his ice cream, and starts playing video games. So you filled his ice cream with tile dust. Yeah, and then I sent him to a hippo farm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't, it didn't work out between us. I sent him to a hippo farm covered in 
meat. And the hippos don't even eat meat. Nope. He's still alive. Extra- he was like, this is gross. Now I need to take a shower. Barely. Make sure you dry off. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, Florida has a village. So this is what I was talking about earlier. So the hippos, there's 80 of them. So yeah. it seems like it's manageable. In Florida, they have, I don't even think they n- have an estimation of the number of no, these there's snakes. No they way. Because they're, they're all fucking running around in the swamp. How do you count snakes? There's, yeah, and I know. Because then, because then all this, because like they don't even fuck like us. They just like wiggle around together and make snake babies. Oh, uh, so have you ever seen? I've never seen it, but it was explained yes, to me. Have you seen have. how they mate? It's like yeah. a ball they like yeah. wrap themselves in. And it looks yeah. like you're looking through a portal to hell. It's yeah. not romantic, it's aggressive. Yeah, you just like uh, apparently there's a place up in Canada. Like towards the south of Canada, if you pay the right guy, he'll take you to the like, back room. We're, we're like you just see, like it looks like it almost looks like the ground is moving, but it's uh, not. It's just like full of snakes, and all they're doing is fucking. I don't even know, like, what's a snake penis even look like? I don't know. I've never. I'm seen not googling one. it. <laughs> That's on you. Not doing it. You can't make me. But yeah, so I mean, they're like, I remember because uh, this was maybe five, ten years ago, they had the first like, where they're basically like, hey, go out. If you find, you know, for every python you find, we'll give you 200 bucks. That's not a bad deal. I mean, 200 bucks is like, that's pretty good. But even yeah, then, I'm like, I don't bad. know, man. Well, and to be fair, like in that situation, I don't think they had to come back alive. Like you could, you could kill a snake and bring it back. Okay. Like I'm cool with that. I mean, it's sad. Like the snake didn't do anything wrong, but. You know, it they are having a huge impact on like so like Key Largo, for example, which that's a pl- maybe that should be our next brocation. We should go to Key West. Key Largo, Montego, baby, baby. why you want to see the snakes, the Coco pythons? Mo. Oh, I'm not talking about my. We'll catch a snake and then we'll watch a sh- then we'll do a show. That's where I want to go. Oh. Just me and my bro. <laughs> but Key Largo is home to an endangered uh, Key Largo wood rat and a Key Largo cotton mouse. So, you know, if you know anything about snakes, Richard, that sounds like two very appetizing animals to a snake. Yeah. So these pythons are in these areas and they're having a huge impact on native animals, you know, like wood rats, squirrels, raccoons, like People are talking like in those areas a couple of years back. It's like, you know, what we haven't seen in a while like a possum <laughs> or a raccoon. Maybe seen when was the last time anybody got their trash rooted through. Nobody? Yeah. What, you know, the other thing I haven't seen in a while are Chihuahua. What happened to that thing? <laughs> you know, what we haven't seen in a while. Tammy. Where is Tammy? Yeah. She always liked to hang out with her ferret and Sundays. <laughs> I wonder what happened to her. I don't know. But what's kind of creepy, so there's there's a uh, a map here, Richard, that shows where these pythons can sustain, where they feel like they can sustain. And there's a yes, a maybe, and a no. Okay. Okay. The yes stretches basically from the very top of California, you know, a little bit down, but not too much. So all the way down to Southern California. Okay. Through Arizona, through New Mexico, all of Texas, Oklahoma, and pretty much all the South. So basically, the enti- so basically that snake can live in the entire South, pretty slash much. S- entire South slash West Coast. It butts up to the just the bottom of Missouri and Illinois. So if we ever have like a a warm spell for a few years, you could probably have a hippo in your backyard Fuck and a that. boa constrictor. I'm not. I'm not participating in any sort of hippo hunt. No, I refuse. I just uh, like even snakes. Like I just so there's a snakes give me the wigglies. I don't know why. I just I just don't like snakes. And I think it's well. No, I've, have I told you why I have a fear of snakes? It's because you read that Bible story and it scared you as a kid. Yeah. So there was a Bible study about this guy <laughs> and a girl, and they're in the greatest it place. Was two was hippos. Paradise. One was named Adam, and one was yeah. named. <laughs> One was named Madam. Yeah. And Adam's and Pablo like, Escobar was there. Yeah. Pablo Escobar's like, hey, listen, you can have anything you want, but don't <laughs> eat the fruit, this apple. And don't Adam's eat like, off I don't the even... boa's tree. 
<laughs> He's like, don't snort this apple cocaine. Yeah. And Adam's like, I don't even like apple flavored cocaine. And then this python's like, no, fucking snort it. Do it. Snort I'm it. from Florida. You should do it. This is fucking metal. <laughs> then Adam realized his dick was hanging out. He's like, I need a fig leaf. Yeah. And then God's like, why are you covering that's what up happened your after the, That's what happened after the cocaine. He was like, holy shit, my dick's <laughs> out. <laughs> and then Pablo's like, why are you covering up your dick? He's like, why aren't you covering up yours? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, we're going. And now. then Pablo's like, "This is a nude paradise. Get out!" <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. I might be paraphrasing. Uh, but so recently, and on the this- seventh day, Pablo rested. <laughs> <laughs> well, he passed out because he had a lot of cocaine. Yeah, because he was too close to the cocaine tree. So I did see this recent video. I don't know if it was it was some kind of python. I think, but it was like a albino python. And it was like 15, 20 feet long. And this family was talking about like, oh, it's like, she's so sweet. Her name's Claire. And like, it like crawls and like slithers on their like four or five year old daughter. Like she just kind of like lets it climb on her and plays with it and scratches the head. Like you look at it and you're like, oh man, like I see a soul there. Richard, there's no soul there. Nope. Not at all. You know what that, you know why that snake has those puppy dog eyes? Because it's a redhead. Yeah, well, it's like, Mom, Dad, go ahead. Just leave us, a, leave me and this kid alone. We'll be okay. I'll watch her. You yeah. know what it's going to do? It's going to eat her. Yep, feet first so they can what watch. Feet- <laughs> <laughs> Witness! This will hurt because I'm not eating Witness! your insides. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty much all there is on the snakes. It's not a whole lot. Besides that's that they're okay. all over the place. Oh, I hate them. Would you live in Florida? I don't know if I could live in Florida. Dude, like, I do really like alligators. Like, alligators to me are cool. Okay. But they're cool from a distance. You know, like, you think about, like, so, like, you think about the area of living. Like, let's say you and I are hanging out in our area. It's, that's, like, the yeah. Midwest. You know, Illinois, Missouri area. And some farmer's like, hey, you know, you guys want to come over and swim in my pond? And you and I are like, sure. He's like, yeah, but it's a nude pond. We're like, ah, oh, whatever. It's like the paradise. <laughs> but like, you think about it, you jump in a body of water, there's very little things you have to worry about, right? Right. Like, maybe you run into like a copperhead or a snake, um, but like nothing that's going to like try to eat you. You go south to Florida, like any of those bodies of water, there could be an alligator, could be there, a python. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm going to swim in the ocean. Guess what? Shark, jellyfish. Like, it's the Australia of America. Like, there's lots of stuff there that wants to at least attack you, if not eat you and kill you. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, the gator thing is re- the gator thing's 100 percent real. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like the, I feel like the python in I feel like the python has a heart like you have to worry less about a python like creeping up and then like wrapping its hand you know wrapping itself around you like i feel like if when it comes to a python like it like if like they like they can bite you sure they they can bite and they can you know like you know like cause you to like bleed and they can break the skin and whatever you know and that's and that and that's bad but when it comes to like pythons don't seem like exceptionally fast when it comes to the like oh i'm gonna wrap myself around you and then squeeze you till you pop like fucking John Voight. Yeah, the python alligator be to get could away. be like run up and just be like chomp. Well, so pythons like you're the biggest like it's almost like any snake. It's if you come around the corner and there's one coiled up or sunning itself and you like you almost step on it because mm-hmm. the snake mm-hmm. is like, oh shit, you stepped on me. You're probably trying to eat me. I'm gonna yeah. fight you. You know, an alligator. You know, you're like, you know what? It's a warm night. I got the pool all to myself. I'm gonna go for a little paradise swimming. Yeah. And you jump in, in the nude. Yeah, that's what that means. And you jump in and then you hit something hard at the bottom of the water. And all of a sudden your arm hurts really bad and you're spinning really fast. It's because there's an alligator in that pool. That's fu- Yeah, fuck all that. Yeah, oh that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like the Python, like pythons don't seem like I don't I've seen videos. Not, I mean, not of like pythons eating people, but like pythons don't seem like exceptionally like fucking like zippity zippity fast to me yeah the python thing like i said it's just gonna scare you when you come around the corner and you're like holy shit a 15 foot python 
Right, right. And you back away slowly. You know, an alligator, you come around a corner and it's there. It's like, oh shit, now it's chasing you. It's like, hey, look, fast food. <laughs> like, have you ever seen the videos of people like hanging out in the pool at night and all of a sudden an alligator just slips right in? Yes. Fuck. Yes. Up. Yes, I have. Like, that's what, like, that's like, again, like in our example. And these if people you're, like, live there. Yeah. They live like, like that. If you have a pool in your backyard, you're like, you know what? I'm going to go for a paradise swim tonight. Like, there's no fear. You just jump in that water. You're good. That's true. But like in Florida, you got to like turn on all the lights. You got to poke around in your filters. You got to check all your bushes. And by that time, you're already done and ready to go to bed. Yep. Nope. Big nope for me. But I mean, the last thing on Gators, did you see there was a video a couple months back? Did you see the guy who jumped in the water and saved his dog from an alligator? No, I didn't. It's like the 70 year old. Did he dude, punch right? the alligator in the nose? Is that what you're supposed to do? Do you punch the alligator in the nose like a shark? Um, alligators. Or is it like a dog where you got to find its butthole and then put your thumb in it? Yeah, you got to stick it right in the butthole. It's tougher too because they're longer. Yeah. So you got to like wicked. swim. You got to like swim all the way to the back. And Yeah. Well, actually, with alligators, you have to blow on it. You have to go. <laughs> and that's when their mouth's open. But you're underwater. How does that I work? Know. It probably thinks you're pleasuring it. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. Be like, am I blowing bubbles or am I rimming this fucking alligator? We call this <laughs> we call this a paradise kiss here in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like this old dude jumps. And this is like a six or eight foot alligator. Like it's a big alligator. And it's like you see it like wrestling with something under the water. And he's trying to open up his jaws. And if you alligator's teeth are all like crooked, crazy teeth too, right? Yeah, yeah. And he gets this little dog out, like it's a puppy. And I don't know what happened with the alligator, if it swam away or what he did. He probably like punched it right in the taint. Because yeah. he had that old man strength. Yeah. And they put a clock in its mouth. And so then he, he always knew when it was coming. Yeah. Shmee! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Captain, I need to rewatch that. I think I could do Smee's voice, but I got to hear it first. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. Um, where was I going with that? Alligator fought it. Old man strength. Old man strength. Yeah. Video saved the dog. But yeah, so I mean, you think like I said, like hippos start making their way up here, and I, I kind of wonder, like you know, we had that big freeze in Texas. Yeah. If something like that, like if you had a you know a week or two of that kind of freeze in like Florida, how much damage that would do to the snakes? You know, would that solve um, the problem? I doubt it, because it can get cold in Florida. I mean, it can get it can get down. I mean, there's been they that sometimes they have they have cold snaps where it gets down to like uh, like thirty, you know, twenty degrees sometimes in the winter. Yeah. So maybe some of them. But not enough to kill them all. You know, that's that's what they say um, contributed to the uh, the Challenger, the Challenger disaster. Yeah, I watched a little bit of that, that the, the whole ring thing. I've only seen the first two episodes of that I need to watch that finish that on Netflix. Well, basically that. Yeah, that like that the O-rings like the, the one thing that they weren't tested for was cold because the things launching from fucking South Florida when the fuck's it going to mm. be cold. And before the challenger launched that there was a cold snap and it got drugged down to like, you know, like 17 degrees or something like that. Yeah. But that's the crazy thing is like the ships before that, like they were like, yeah, something's not right here. Like it's starting to burn through like the secondary protection ring. Like that seems like a problem. Yeah. That happened 17 days after my birthday. So my point is, is that it happens it can get, it does get cold in Florida and the snakes are apparently surviving anyway. Cause I would think that they would just like, you know, like just burrow underground. Yeah. I don't know. Like I'm not a snake expert. Like I'm sure if it's an extended period of time because they're cold blooded. So they need the warmth around them and the sun to kind of keep them going. Right. Right. So probably if it's like a couple of days, they almost go into like semi hibernation wherever that's they're a good at point. see that's when you go and get them that's when you go yeah. out and kill snakes because because uh because when it's cold it's not that they're it's not that they're like they're just like lazy like they won't move yeah or they don't they move, move as fast. fast that's what so sucks then, like it's like hunting vampires during the day sean oh it is yeah then you stab it in the heart yeah it turns into ash and then you're like e yeah Easy cleanup. 
I'm Buffy. No, that's what sucks like in our neighborhood uh, when you get to like spring and fall where it's like kind of warm during the day but cools off quite a bit at night. When you walk around the – our there's a lake out here and you walk around it and it's like sidewalk and like street. Like uh-huh. you'll, you'll be like, what's that stick doing? Oh, not a stick. Yeah. Trying to get some extra warmth. I've had that happen where I well, – like occasionally I'll have like a snake on my roof because the layout on the roof. Oh. Uh, like at especially – At the house you're at now? No, not the house I'm in now. Oh, okay. But I, there, there's been a house or two where I've had like snakes on the roof because I've like they've been like dark shingles, and so the layout on the dark shingles to like uh, warm up. If it's ugh. like, especially like uh, this one place I lived at, because it was surrounded by fields, and mm-hmm. so it would get like really cold, and it would like even even when it was warm out, it would get really like breezy cool because it was like down in a valley. Yeah, so it would get like kind of breezy, cool, and so the snakes would like be up on the roof and lay out on the roof because then the sun would hit the would hit the yeah the roof the roof shingles and the, like the whole thing would just be warm, and so then I'd have that. to climb out on the roof and fucking take a stick and like basically like shove them off the house. And then your sisters would be down at the bottom and you shove them off on top of them. No, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the apple cocaine. Like, it wasn't me. <laughs> well, Richard, uh, as we've gone through and probably has sparked a bunch of things that'll make me scared to sleep at night or climb on roofs or swim or do pretty much anything, do you have any Richard's closing thoughts? Well, I think you're fine. You know, I think that we learned just, you know, stay away from, a, you know, certain areas of Columbia and pretty much all of Florida. And I think you'll be fine. But the animals, they are a coming. And we need to be prepared. And that's and why pe- I've decided that you should be in charge of leading the effort against our invaders. You know what, Richard? I think what this is teach me is we might need to move to, I don't know, Dakota, Wyoming. We just have to keep Canada. going north. This is going to be like a, like a zombie apocalypse. You just yeah. got to keep heading north. The snakes really slow down once they cross that Dakota pipeline. <laughs> Well, Richard, let me uh, do a little bit of housekeeping as we close this episode out. You can visit our website, we're LangoJabros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LangoJabro. Email us at bros at LangoJabros.com. And if you like, uh, we always really appreciate anybody can throw a couple bucks our way if we've kind of if you've enjoyed our episodes and enjoyed our show. And we always like to thank our two patrons, Wendy and Aaron. You guys are the best. We would totally go python snake hunting with you. And by go we with would. you, you mean... We'd let you guys go. You could tell us all about it. Exactly. You can send us video. That's fine. I'll watch it. I won't it. watch it, though. I'll be too scared. All right. Well, is there anything else before I close her out? No, nope, I'm good, sir. All right. Well, that's all the bros we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why. Be, be a, a why, why not. not. Unless that why is, why don't you want to go snake hunting? Because like Pablo Escobar... I rest on the seventh day.